Okay, so one of the first things that I want to do right now, right here today, is I'm going to do a little bit of busy work. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here with a uh, vacuum cleaner and I'm going to start vacuuming out all this loose rust. And I might start uh, actually um, uh, grinding away with a wire brush or whatever to get a lot of this rust scale loosened up. Although I think really the biggest thing that I need to be doing here is getting under the car and working with these subframe connectors and getting them ready to go uh, to weld those in because once I get them welded in uh, my intention is to get that rear axle out and uh, start working on the shock towers also working on that axle and I like to do all that before it gets too cold because once it gets cold I don't want to be out here in the uh, uh, in the winter time. My ultimate goal is to get basically the entire floor pan sealed on the top and underneath up to the uh, what would be the firewall area sealed and complete before winter sets in. That's my goal and plan might change a little bit depending on what we find but that's basically how it's all gonna go. Okay, so I just got done uh, vacuuming the interior here and actually, believe it or not, this took a lot longer than I expected. And the reason for that is because a lot of this rust and undercoating, I think, or sealer stuff that they put in here actually started chipping off rather easily. Uh, you can see that this is like some sort of rubberized uh, undercoating or sealer. And you can see here that it, it I mean, I'm, it's all gone. Here. And it's because when I was rubbing on the floor with the vacuum attachment, it easily came off. And in fact, I had to stop the vacuum a couple times because it kept plugging it up. And then over here, you can see it's actually a little bit oily under here. And I think that because I know the power steering pump and, and gearbox over here was leaking underneath the car and it might have seeped in somehow uh, and got underneath here and again it's a little bit oilier under here um, again I'm also finding more things uh, this is looks to be uh, damage right here the floor is pushed up right here it's not that bad um, I don't know if it's I mean it's hard to tell but it does look like it was not made that way kind of sort of especially with the way this uh, looks over here in the corner, but I'm not positive. Maybe that is the way it's supposed to be uh, Given the fact that you know, you do want to probably have your foot a little higher here when you're pushing on that High beam switch there. I'm not exactly sure but it does look like To me that it's been pushed up here. Uh, you can also see like right here uh, There is obviously a weld right there uh, from underneath. I never did that ever so uh, where that came from is beyond me um, so again some more stuff that I'm finding uh, the plug here was missing where over here you can actually see the plug it's still in there um, one thing I want to make sure that you guys are doing uh, if you are kind of following along and doing something yourself uh, make sure you're always thinking safety first okay uh, in my case you can see I'm wearing these really heavy uh, leather gloves and it's a good idea because if you look you can find all kinds of spots like right there little sharp points right there uh, where's another one there's another one right there see there's another one right there and I think there was one over here yep right there it's hard to see it but it's right there anyway what I'm trying to say is is that all that uh, that fuzz and everything and the rust, I'm rubbing my hand on here like so to, to work it loose and I'm using the vacuum attachment as well. And uh, of course, if you just use your bare hand, I mean, I know I've seen people with some uh, pretty calloused hands, but uh, you know, little little sharp points like that could catch you and, and cut your hands up and you certainly don't want that uh, and risk uh, a chance of infection or anything like that. And then, I, of course, my glasses are safety certified, even though they're prescription glasses. So if you don't wear glasses like I do, kind of convenient in a way, because 
I never have to put safety glasses on. They're already there. Um, but anyway, if you don't wear glasses, I would highly recommend, uh, even if you want to look cool and put sunglasses on, at least do that much. Um, and then some of the other things that I, uh, when, you know, vacuum this thing up, when you saw it, it was pretty dirty, and now you notice it's pretty clean, but also, look at this, it's showing some spots that I had no idea, you know, holes in the floor. Uh, we're finding all kinds of new things now, so, um, yeah, it, it doesn't really change my plan. I, I'm thinking that I'm still very likely going to be using the uh, POR15 to seal this up, and they make that fiberglass cloth to, you know, you, I guess you put the, this is what I understand, you put the, you clean this up with a, a wire brush or something and you scratch it up really good, get as much loose stuff as you can off there. Then you uh, degrease it and de-wax it and all that. Then you put a metal prep on there. Then after that you put the POR15 one coat on. And then if I'm not mistaken, I believe you put a second coat on. And then if you are close to having a lot of uh, holes, etc., you know, where you need to, uh, you know, strengthen it, they give you that fiberglass cloth, which will probably have to be used back here, because that's a pretty big one there. A lot of daylight there. But you take the uh, fiberglass cloth, and you, you lay it over the top, and then you saturate that fiberglass cloth with the PR15, and then it kind of melts all together, I suppose, as what as I understand. And then when it does that, it, uh, it becomes very hard and uh, does a really good job. So I am not at the point where I think I'm going to be actually replacing floor pans, which is a good thing. Uh, I mean, I know how to weld and, and do all that kind of work, but honestly, I don't want to do all that kind of work. So my plan uh, is I'm going to put a lot of trust and faith in the POR15, I guess, clean this up really good. Um, and then, yeah, POR this baby and probably where those rust holes are at, I used some fiberglass cloth. I, I would imagine that, I don't know, this, this feels really solid and strong. These holes are very, very small. I, I would imagine that you can probably just get away with uh, putting a little dab of, I don't know, like RTV or sealer. Or I think they even make a, a, a POR15 sealer that you can plug a hole like that with and then just POR two coats over the top. And again, remember, I'm going to actually be uh, putting POR on the bottom of the vehicle as well. So this thing's really going to be sealed. And then, of course, when I'm done with all the POR, I'm just, it's, I don't know, I'm going to be using a gallon on this thing, I guess. I don't know. We'll see how far it goes. But the after I do that, the intention is to use the POR undercoating, uh, the spray, the rubberized undercoating. I bought a couple cans. They're not cheap. They're for 20 bucks a piece. Um, and spray that on. And again, I plan to do probably that after uh, I get the car painted and, and pretty much done. And then after that, and as you know, I'm an AMS oil dealer, 1086626 is my reference. Um, I plan to actually use the AMS oil heavy duty metal protector. Uh, that'll be like when I'm completely and totally done with the entire car, no more painting needed. I don't want any wax or anything like that to, uh, you know, wax or oil or anything like that to interfere with getting a good paint job on here. I'm not looking for a show car because I don't plan to show this per se. I plan to drive it. And, uh, and then, yeah, put the uh, POR, seal it up, put the uh, rubberized undercoating over the top of that. So that'll seal the POR and give it a little bit of rubbery uh, insulation, not to mention, you know, rocks bouncing off of it, etc. And then as a final, when I'm all done, everything's good, uh, before I go getting it dirty, uh, get underneath there and spray the uh, Amdoil Heavy Duty Metal Protector all over the place. It's basically like a Cosmoline, so to speak. I know they make something else. It's called, uh, I think it's called... Uh, um, R-235 or something like that. It's like a military grade Cosmoline or whatever. And a spray can as well, but this Amsoil Heavy Duty Metal Protector is virtually the same thing. I've used it before. It is really 
uh, waxy and whatnot and, and kind of oily, but when you put it on and then you let it dry, it, it's just barely tacky, but at the same time, uh, it's, it does a really good job of making sure that, uh, you know, it seals out all the moisture. So that's my plan and that's how I'm going to be doing it. Um, now I plan to go out here and get underneath the car and probably start working on the subframe connector area is what I plan to do next. So if you're interested in that Amco heavy duty metal protector, make sure you look down in the links down into the description and whatnot. I'll have it down there for you. Uh, I'm very certain that you'll uh, appreciate and use it. So talk to you later, moving on to the next. So I want to talk to you real quick about all the tools that I got here for scraping and sanding and grinding and all that, wire brushing, etc. Um, I bought this brand new uh, Black & Decker uh, angle grinder, four and a half inch I think it is. And um, as you can see I haven't even used it yet, but I have an old one, a really old one. And the cord is getting all broken up and uh, I don't have a guard right here. So that would be pretty dangerous. So I decided to set an example to my kids and go out and buy a brand new one. And I like this one because it has a trigger with a trigger lock and also you can lock it down and let it keep going and to turn it off you just push that and then it comes off. I'll have a link down in the description of what model that is in case you're interested. And it was a great price at 34 bucks. So here at the local hardware store. Uh, I bought a bunch of uh, uh, wheels. Uh, these, these are actually well, see the the grinder itself came with one wheel, but I have I had a whole bunch of these already, um, so I'm just gonna use them up as I use them. But uh, I bought an assortment of uh, wire brushes to fit my drill. Um, I find that when you buy them as a kit, uh, you know, like a universal kit, they have a whole bunch of them. That it's a lot cheaper than if you just buy them individually. So. Uh, but then maybe if you're looking for a particular size, then I guess it's better to go with the individual one. But um, for the most part, though, if you buy it as a set, uh, like a plastic blister pack or whatever, I, again, I noticed that they're a lot cheaper that way. You can get like five for ten dollars when you can buy each one individually for three to four dollars. So uh, just make sure that your RPM is... Uh, within spec of whatever you're going to be using. So since uh, these right here are meant for the grinder, you can see that one there says 11,000 RPM and this grinder happens to say right on the box somewhere. Uh, I'm not going to look for it right now, but it, it says 11,000 RPM. So uh, these are really interesting. Uh, they say they last 10 times longer than a wire wheel. They're nylon Bristol. I guess, and then they come in different coarseness, uh, coarse, very coarse, medium, fine, etc. So I'm going to try these and see if they really do outlast uh, wire wheels. Again, this would be for my drill. Uh, I'm going to be using a, a Black & Decker uh, M12 setup is what I'm going to be, or not, excuse me, not Black & Decker, Milwaukee. Uh, I've got all the Milwaukee stuff pretty much uh, in the M18 and the M12. Uh, I love that set. Again, I'll have a link down there for you to show you which particular model I'm using and you can go check it out. So anyway, that's pretty much what I'm doing here. Uh, just showing you all the different styles of wire brushes and nylon brushes and also uh, I got some um, what I call grinding uh, sandstones, I guess. That's what I call them, anyway. Um, and again, you can see it's it's rated for the grinder. And this one here happens to be, I believe, 36, yeah, 36 grit, four and a half. They make them in four inch, by the way, which would fit this, but uh, four and a half is what this actually is. Um, and uh, this here will be used to smooth up a lot of metal and whatnot. Uh, underneath there, not mainly, not necessarily for all the uh, uh, heavy-duty work of scraping off the undercoating and in the rust, 
but mainly just for finishing touch is what I plan to use this for and scratching it up really good so that the uh, POR and the undercoating and all that can actually uh, stick very well to the bottom of the vehicle or wherever I put it I guess so anyway I just wanted to show you the tools and whatnot that I'm using and of course this brush came with uh, the kit that came with all these wheels here again for ten dollars. Uh, I remember looking at one of these uh, I think it was five dollars alone just for this and then I saw the set hanging up there in a blister pack with this uh, I probably won't be using this too much although there may be a few spots I might have to use a uh, hand brush but uh, I'm gonna try to use the machines and equipment all the time if I can that way uh, the work gets done pretty fast and you know how that is now with that being uh, uh, said <clears throat> remember wear your safety glasses your gloves and heavy clothes and whatnot make sure you're uh, wearing the proper PPE and also uh, make sure that you know how to use this stuff I mean uh, uh, you, what one guy once told me you can mess up something really fast with a power tool even though it can also get work done really fast as well so uh, and that is very true because I I was a beginner at one time so I, I know exactly what he's talking about so again uh, these are the tools that I'm using again you'll see the links down there below as to um, you know where you can get them and I think I've got probably all together here with the grinder and all these wheels and everything I'm gonna guess around fifty to seventy dollars. If I, 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 the whole bill was one hundred and fifty, but I bought a lot of other stuff that I needed for the house, so I can't really tell you exactly what <coughs> the final bill was for all this. But I, I would guess it'd be about seventy to seventy-five bucks max. All right, so what we're gonna do next is come over here and we're gonna get on those subframe connectors and do a little work there. <laughs> 